find the end. That's about there. Zero that. Oh, can I just break my... Welcome back to the workshop. This week we're continuing to work on our cylinder. I'm going to lap the inside of the cylinder to improve the surface finish and to do that we're going to build a shop built lap which is this and uh, it's a tapered uh, lap with an expanding uh, mandrel in the middle uh, that, that we can tighten up and uh, use uh, to to do two things we can use it to, to to lap this with some diamond paste and get it nice and round and also we can hold it in the we can tighten it right up and spin the cylinder between centers and then machine these ends to final length and make sure they're absolutely um, perpendicular when they're spinning in the lathe they're guaranteed to be perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder they're not guaranteed to be flat but they're at least guaranteed to be 90 degrees which is really all we want all right so let's get on with it we start out by turning down the ends of our mandrel we'll need a thread at both ends and we need to relieve a section before the thread so that we can hold the mandrel in the chuck or the vise without damaging the threads So we first turn down to the size we want our threads, then we turn down to the size of the relief. The relief needs to be small enough so the nut can get over the top of it to get onto the thread. At the end of each thread we also add a small relief so that when we're cutting our threads, the thread cutting tool will have somewhere to stop. I'm brushing on some lubricant called Rocol, which helps to produce a nicer surface finish. Now we flip the part and do the same thing on the small end. I've switched to a PCD or polycrystalline diamond. It's an insert which works wonderfully well on high carbon steel. They've gotten a bit cheaper recently and I tried one. It was so good I ordered 10 more. This stock is 4140, which was just what I had. And um, it's not very well annealed, I don't think. So normal carbide does a pretty rubbish job. But these PCD inserts are just fantastic. Now I'm making the nuts for each end of the mandrel. These are made from some stainless steel which was kicking around the shop. Everything on this thing is just made from what I had. Cleaning up the ends as is tradition, drilling them and then boring them to the size I need to match the threads that we machined earlier. Then we just single point the internal thread till it fits nicely. Now I'm parting off some spaces which will support the lap when we bore out its internal taper. I've put the aluminium for the lap in the chuck now and I'm boring it out to fit the spaces. Okay, here's the setup. We've got the rotary table set up. 
uh, with the the vice with the chuck straight from the from the mill uh, from the lathe. Now um, this is dead centered. Uh, zero is the against the edge. Uh, we're going to go in twelve mil in that way, and we're going to cut to this end, uh, not not past the end of the chuck there. So we'll go in ten, eleven. This solid carbide slitting saw makes short work of pretty much anything, so aluminium is no problem for it. Now I'm drilling out the centre to give me room to bore out the taper. Now to give it some support I press in the spacer. You can see that the mandrel's been slit from both ends towards the middle. Okay so this is where we're at with this mandrel. We've built this, uh, we've built the base and we've got a thread at each end and one is much larger than the other and what we need to do is turn a, put a taper on this on this bar here and also we need to put a, a cor exactly the same taper on on this which is our expanding lap and the, the way this will work is that the um, these nuts will, will push the push the expanding lap deeper onto the taper and and make it expand and we can precisely control how much it expands with those two nuts there um, so the trouble we have is that we've 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 cut a slot in we've cut slots uh, into the ends of of this and at the moment they don't go all the way through to the core but when we when we uh, cut that taper in they will and if we if we if we if we're not careful, um, it will distort and change size. And, and and one what we need to be able to do is to hold one end in in the three jaw chuck um, here and squeeze down on it without it squashing. And once we take away that centre core, the three jaw chuck chuck will squash it. Uh, because of these slots. So that's why we've uh, machined in these rebates in, in the end here. And I've made these uh, washers that fit e exactly in the end and I'll, I'll press those in. And then what I can do is I can, I can hold this end in the three jaw chuck and squash down and it will be supported by that ring. And the other end I can I can jam this uh, washer in and I'll use this hose clip to, to go on the end and I'll tighten that up and that will just uh, stop it from uh, vibrating or expanding or moving or, or, or whatever. It will give us more rigidity uh, and, it, and at the end I'll be able to knock out these what's left of these washers. Uh, and. Um, yeah, and we should we should have an expanding mandrel, and uh, and see how we go. Okay, we're looking pretty good. There's a little bit of chatter on this outside bit. And the inside bit's not too bad. I'm going to slow down a little bit.
Okay, it will help if we're not in time lapse mode. Now, we're set up between centers, drive dog, taper turning attachment, exactly the same setup as before. So when I come out, this end is the big end, this end is a small end. We go in with the compound, we're good to go. Now it's just a matter of turning down the tapered section till it fits nicely. For the finishing cut I turned the lathe up to top speed and used the PCD insert again. Okay, so that's all worked and we've got our lap assembled. Now what I have to do is just turn down these end uh, nuts so that they're below, just a little bit below the surface of the lap. And then I'll have to put uh, either some holes or some facets on there so I can tighten them up. But Now we add six holes so that we can use a tommy bar to tighten or loosen things later on. It's hard not to sound like a dickhead when you're narrating things. Here I'm adding some grooves using a threading tool. The purpose of the grooves is to give the abrasive lapping compound somewhere to sit so that it doesn't all get wiped off by the cylinder when we start lapping. The last step is to clean up the surface of our lap to make sure that it is nicely round and straight. I'm using an aluminium insert here and it's producing a fantastic finish. Finally it's the moment of truth where we actually use the lap. I use a convenient piece of quarter inch bar to tighten things up so that it's just snug. I've put lots of diamond paste on and now it's just a matter of moving the cylinder around while the lathe slowly turns the mandrel. Notice that I've covered the lathe to protect it from the abrasive. Adding some oil helps. It's necessary to tighten things up from time to time, pushing the lap onto the cone to make it larger. Before the final stage of trimming the cylinder ends, I take another cut to make sure that the lapping hasn't upset anything and to make sure it's still concentric. Okay, we finished our lapping and now we can bring the ends of the cylinder uh, to dimension. Now, I measured the uh, ports on the inside and this end, uh, the end I've marked with black texture is 22 thousandths too far down. So we're going to start by evening things up. So we'll find the end. That's about there. Zero that.
Oh, did I just break my... No. Let's go... Five. Let's see what five looks like. All right, we got there in the end. The, the lap worked. We've got a great um, surface finish on our cylinder. It's also very cylindrical and round, and uh, the design of this worked out really well. Uh, things that worked well were having big threads so I could get a, a, a thread cutting boring bar in and a big taper so I could get a boring bar in to cut the taper. Um, this this kind of collet relief thing, probably those slots could have been a bit longer. It was hard to tighten up, but it did work. Um, the, the fine threads were good. They gave me a lot of um, fine adjustment in, in adjusting the taper. Um, aluminium worked well with the diamond paste, but it, it, did, it did seem to wear out quick. Like, it really didn't take long and it was loose in the hole and I'd have to tighten it up again, but it did the job, so it seems to be working. I, I uh, skimmed it off uh, a couple of, well, I skimmed it off initially and then I skimmed it off again uh, before I did used it as a mandrel just to make sure everything was concentric. Uh, and that all seemed to work really well. So uh, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye for now.